Mm -hmm. Cut. You see that? A few weeks ago, when I opened this web camera up, I did not know what rabbit hole I was getting myself into. Honestly, I was just thinking I was going through the motions of trying to do a product review. But this has uh, gotten, its, gotten me down quite a rabbit hole. What I discovered was that at the heart of this webcam, in generic T31 processor, while I've uh, dealt with several other kinds of single board computers, this one is quite fascinating and I didn't even know it was on the market. I find these articles such as uh, the T31 AI video processor combines uh, MIPS and RISC-V cores. Uh, T31 is a low power AI video processor for surveillance application that combines a MIPS Linux core and RISC-V real-time OS. Uh, there's just all sorts of interesting uses for this, including uh, Android tablets. Now I'm gonna, this is a diagram of the processor, but what I really want to show you is what I found when I was able to dig up a APK SDK that maybe somebody leaked on GitHub. I, I can't be sure, but I didn't sign an NDA and it was on GitHub. And there is quite a bit of interesting puzzles to solve within this. Now, the general layout, uh, you're going to have, so like the way that the, this is embedded hardware, but it runs Linux or at least a Linux kernel. Now, I'm not sure on this particular webcam, because I haven't been able to dump the firmware yet, how much of, uh, of, a, of a Linux kernel is on here, or if it's simply U-boot with an application. From everything that I can find, this is your general layout. You have your hardware, uh, which is obvious. Uh, then you have the Linux kernel as part of the normal uh, stack, and you have standardized drivers that are working and then you end up having a you know they provide an SDK for uh, C development of an application and that's where you are able to access all of these AI functions image processing the basic core of the processor and then also the risk core I am still not sure how much of this firmware on this device is running on the RISC core versus the MIPS core. I should expect to be able to find the U, the open source U-boot uh, bootloader, a Linux kernel, and then some sort of application code. But where are those things and how am I going to get access to them? That is something that is relatively common. And it lies, oh, nope, in this, and that right there. Let's take it under the microscope and see. Number one, we're gonna look here and you see those four pins? Those look a lot to me like UART access. And when I've seen this uh, chip referenced in other, um, other articles, okay, or in data sheets, for example, for this new uh, Wise Ways Cam, um, uh, IP camera. Uh, there's other IP cameras that are uh, that are using this chipset because it's low power. It's got a good punch to it, but it's low power. They've made it very cheap to include. Those IP based cameras generally host a web page, and then there's some sort of cloud component, etc. And we'll come back to this in another, you know, later on. This chip was. I guess, um, used in this camera, the best I can guess is that this was actually manufactured in like 2020 or a little bit later than that when you know what was happening and uh, webcams were flying off the shelf. So people weren't necessarily needing the IP webcams nearly as much as they were needing webcams. And so that's how we ended up getting the this super generic webcam flooding the market.
down to the microscope. Got those four connectors, toothpick pointer. You see, oop, first day on the job here. We have transmit and this is the receive. So in theory, I can hook this up to a, what we call a, a level converter or a TTL converter or a serial, um, a serial adapter by hooking that up to the computer if I'm lucky, this will actually boot with what with an open sur open source firmware called U-Boot, and then I might be able to access memory, access uh, functions of the camera in kind of a low level. Might even be able to get it to give up the goat and send me all of its firmware data. So speaking of, reorientate here. I want to highlight. There's these two chips, okay? These two components, is perhaps a better word. There's the processor. I've angled it so that you can read this a little bit better even though I have it upside down. Here we go, still working here. We have these two components. You have the, the processor, and you notice the, what it, I can only guess is the UART. Um, you, you, that's a universal asynchronous something transport that's a, a universal serial. Okay, and then you have this guy right here. And this N, this N or memory, right, this NOR memory is, uh, from what I can tell, is about 8 megabytes. Now, 8 megabytes, megabytes, not gigabytes, eight megabytes may seem relatively small. However, for an embedded device, you know, that's as much as it takes to store and uh, store the software to run the various components. It's particularly, a, it's totally enough to be able to have a, a bootloader here that will bootstrap up, you know, get the processor running and then start running an application. As we go down the road here, I'll try and give some uh, some sort of introduction. But at a super high level, think of this device as a computer, just like it's a computer. Well, doesn't really matter. Computers with computers and computers. <laughs> this is a whole this is a whole system. Nerd reset. This is essentially the flash memory. Think of that like your hard drive. This is eight megabytes and it stores the operating system and the software to run the camera. And this is your processor. So think of this like your Intel Pentium, right? So Nginx is like saying Intel and T31 is like saying Pentium. Now there was multiple versions of those Pentiums and I'm still having a hard time finding what version of the T31 this actually is. Uh, I'm going to assume it's the lower end version. And um, primarily the things that I found, and I'm pointing here because I don't know where it actually is, but the memory here, I'll uh, give you the diagram. I can barely see. All right. So the deal is that this is actually a system on a chip. I have not been able to tell that it has any persistent storage baked into it. But while you do have the Xburst MIPS CPU and a RISC-V core, it's got built-in DDR memory. And from what I can tell, the differences between the models of processor are primarily, of, of the T31, are primarily based on how much DDR memory it has. In my time, it's Monday. My last video went out on Friday and it did way better than I expected. So I wanted to try and follow up as quickly as I could with at least a little bit of research update and, uh, and a tour of the circuit board. On Wednesday, I am supposed to be getting a uh, FTDI adapter, which allows me to safely and easily hook this up to a computer to be able 
to try and see if we can get into U-Boot and dump the memory of this. Otherwise, I will have to take more drastic steps and try and get the firmware dumped manually uh, directly from the chip rather than using a port. And that may include me needing to desolder. The end of my videos are a lot like my chess game. It's awkward at the end. So we're going to sign off here. I'm going to say happy hacking and try this at home. Go get, <laughs> go to your thrift store, go to your, uh, these Amazon big box store return bin places have uh, been, been popping up all over the place. Go to thrift stores, oh, auctions. Um, find, go to high bid or a local auction and you can get this stuff for super cheap. Get yourself started into reverse engineering. You can do it too. Beep boop.